I never thought I would ask whether or not a bowling ball would pair better with beef or chicken, or maybe fish, but I think it's time we find out. Let's get into it. going on you guys welcome to 10 pin life my name is ben and in this video we are going to be talking about the roto grip hustle wine if you are a big fan of bowling please be sure to like this video share it with your friends and also hit that subscribe button down below before we get started i want to throw a big shout out to the guys at striking edge pro shop dale and rhino are awesome to work with so if you are in need of a new fit new ball anything in the central wisconsin area please be sure to give them a call i have their contact information in a link down below so the Hustle Wine, it is one of the newest HP1 releases from Roto Grip, featuring the tried and true Hustle Core, but also the VTC Pearl cover stock. So starting in the middle, we have the Hustle Core. The numbers on this core have stayed the same since its release of a 253 RG and an 030 differential. Moving to the outer shell of the ball, we have the VTC Pearl cover stock. And interesting about this is the fact that it is the exact same cover stock that was used on the Hustle Wrap, but in a darker, the deep wine red color. Being that it is an HP1 ball, it is going to fall in a similar category to, let's say, an Electrify or a Burner Pearl, one of the lower end type bowling balls that's relatively simple in its technology and really meant for when lanes start to dry out. When I think about balls that are in this category, this lower end or simple technology type of category, I really think that it has its place, but it's not something that really has maybe a lot of shelf appeal or isn't going to sell a lot of units, but it's also something that a lot of guys probably need, especially if you're going out and bowling tournaments. Historically, these types of bowling balls have actually been the ones that a lot of guys reference when they're talking about kind of what saved their blocks or what really helped them get through when the going got tough and the lanes got very difficult because when they have these lower performance type balls, you don't have to open your angles up a ton. You can shut them down because it's not going to overhook, overreact, and you're able to just get into the pocket. Maybe not carry everything, but you're going to get there and you're going to be close. You're going to leave a a lot of single pins. You're going to leave a lot of makeable spares versus trying to cover a lot of boards looking for a 250 look. You're able to keep it in front of you and look for a 210, a 220 look and just keep yourself moving forward in a block where you really need to grind. Another optimized setting that I've seen for balls that are like this is for your low rev type players who really don't like to move left. So if you have individuals who really just prefer to play up the boards, especially on house shots and just keep their game nice and simple, when they get into bigger bowling balls, balls that have bigger cores, stronger covers, that sort of thing, it forces them left. And when you're a lower rev type player, I think a lot of pro shop guys think to themselves that they need more ball to be able to get up into the pocket. But on many house shots, what happens is their ball just fries and it doesn't hook because it's just dead in the front part of the lane, not because the ball doesn't have potential, but because it's used all of its potential. An HP1 ball like this or any lower performance ball is gonna be able to get through a lot of that friction and save some energy for the person that maybe doesn't have a lot of hand and still get through pins before the ball completely rolls out and dies. Another interesting thing about this release that I found pretty intriguing is that this is the 10th hustle that Roto Grip has released. They've been doing them in groups of two or three with having a solid cover stock and a pro cover stock or mixing a hybrid in there from time to time, but in kind of bunches of two or three. And this is the 10th iteration of a ball using this hustle core with a different cover stock on it. So initially when I thought about doing this video, the question that I wanted to answer was why did they make this ball? Why did they release this ball? Same core, same cover as a different bowling ball, just a different color what is the intention behind releasing this ball at the time that they did? Was it a line filler? Were they trying to just replace the wrap with maybe something that's got that deeper color so it read the lane a little bit sooner, but it's gonna be a small difference most guys aren't gonna see? Or is it actually going to have a substantially different shape than the other stuff that is in the lower tier of that line? How does it shape up against, say, an Electrify or against a Burner Pearl when they're really gonna be in a similar category? And also, how does it compare to, say, some of the bigger pearls like the Zen, which has been one of the most successful balls of the last year and a half or so. So rather than speculate, let's go out to the lanes. Let's see what it's got. that way right all right burnt up house shot we're gonna stand about 28 here trying to get her to about 
eight or so down lane. No, nah, it didn't get quite right enough. Just kind of hung. Let's see if we can actually hit our spot here. Rolled the shit out of that one. So far, three pretty bad shots, to be honest, but you'll have that. It's bowling, right? I've gotten nine three times on three not great shots, so that's a good sign. We're gonna move a couple more right also, because I think I might just be a little bit too far left. We're gonna about 25 here. All right, actually threw it good that time. Gonna move one back left here, 26. Same zone here. There it is. Like I said though, this is on a burned up house shot and I really didn't give that away at all, but it was not afraid to get off of it once it actually got to the end of the pattern, which is awesome. Super clean too. I mean, that didn't see anything. Same thing here. Got that one way righter. There we go. Now we're tuned in. Let's get around it a little bit. Let's try that. Let's get around it a bit. We're going to move back to two more. Send it right. Oh, that got a mile right. Ooh. That was interesting. Heck, that was pretty cool, actually. Honestly, if it's going to come squealing back like that, let's use some shape. Okay, don't whiz it right. But I can absolutely give that ball business at the bottom. I mean, those are two shots where I have absolutely wrenched on them. Let's get a benchmark here. We are going to throw the Hustle Inc. Probably the most popular hustle ball that was ever made. We're going to stand in the same spot, try and do the same thing, see what it does. So that picked up as we would all expect quite a bit sooner. Nothing terribly surprising about that shape. A little bit stronger front to back, solid cover. Let's go to the daddy here. We're gonna throw the Zen, see what it does on the same spot as well. Way slower. That was a great illustration of the difference of what differential can do. Super continuous. Once it saw kind of where that friction was, you can really start to see it pick up, but it's also pearl. So I got through it pretty good on something this fried. Probably wouldn't throw the Zen all that much, honestly. You'd have to get so far left. You just angles get so steep. Let's try the Honey Badger Revival. This ball has been great on freaking everything for me. illustration of asymmetry. It's really nice to have four balls that you kind of know what they're gonna do and they do what the book says they're supposed to do. Now let's go back to the wine. Four balls that are probably gonna go with me in my next tournament, honestly. To be honest, I blinked on that. I didn't see it go all the way down the line. <laughs> We're gonna play some different zones. Now that we kind of know where it wants to be, I'm gonna move eight right. See if we can get up the back of it. Just push it down the lane a bit. Definitely saw where it wanted to hook and it did it, but it still kind of just laid there and waited for the right spot. Every shot I've thrown with this ball thus far, I have given the business. And so far, it looks pretty good. We're gonna move five more right, see if we can get through it. Nope. That tried so hard to get there. A little bit too much. Benchmark shots were about 28 with my feet. Four left off of that. Move our feet up a little bit too. I probably got some more to go off of that. So it's 32. Go three more, we'll go 35. That is about the limit right there. I mean, that's HP one ball hitting fifth arrow. Let's see what the Zen does from in there. Wow, lots rounder. I'm gonna throw that one more time, but I'm gonna do something different with my hand. I'm gonna kind of slow roll it not quite give it away as much. Yeah, you have one that is just about getting in and kind of wheeling on it, letting that axis rotation really work in the hustle line because the lower differential means it won't quit versus the Zen because of how much differential is in it and how early rolling that core is. What'll actually happen is just let it pick up and it won't do anything stupid in the oil because it's still getting through wherever you've got maybe some burn spots but you can't really wheel on it like that on something that's clipped off like this because the differential 
slows it down too much. And I need two eight ten. Let's see if we can nut a couple and get on out of here. Do you love it when you throw it bad and it still strikes? One more. I'm gonna we'll send her back here. It doesn't get any better than that. Let's go. And we are back. Just got off the lanes with the Hustle Wine, and boy, that actually worked out much better than I expected. You know, a part of it was sort of by design, and when I decided to go throw those shots, I really wanted to make sure that it was on something that was maybe a little bit trashed, something that was a little bit drier. You know, I've had a couple times to throw this ball in fresher conditions, and it's really not suited necessarily for that. But man, when it really got into these high friction zones, it was just really able to control it, but still continue through pins. Why does it do that? Well, it's meant to do that. That's the entire point of this bowling ball. It be able to get through friction, float through the fronts, get through some mid lane stuff, use a lower differential type core to be able to save some energy, don't burn it all up in the mid lane, and just use that to get through pins well. So what do I think the best case uses of this ball are? Well, there's two. One is this is gonna be when there's a lot of friction. That was the whole point of going and bowling on this burned up house shot. That's when I'm going to use this ball. When the fronts are fried or the edges are fried and I need something to get through it and also not just die when it hits that corner or just bank off of it and go dead left, this ball is able to float and have an easy reaction, not overdo it and control the pocket when there's a lot of friction. This also comes into play during longer format tournaments. If the qualifying block is between 8, 10, maybe even 12 games, and we're bowling on something that's 38 to 45 feet, probably somewhere in there, I'm going to bet that this ball is going to come out somewhere in the latter portions of that qualifying block when I just need to float it through it and hit where the break point is and just get it into the pocket because sometimes the Zen is a little bit too much. Sometimes the Honey Badger wants to roll too much. Sometimes the big solid balls just don't have enough giddy up and go to get through the pins at all. And this ball really has that place later in those blocks, just being able to control the pocket, control my reaction and not split a whole bunch and maybe kick out a few tens and just keep grinding out those 220s, hopefully even getting up into 240s, something like that. The other best use scenario that I see with this ball is going to be for either rev dominant or slow speed type bowlers, and especially those that are both. And this is gonna be traditionally meant for those that bowl primarily or entirely on house shots. If you are a rev dominant player, this ball is gonna do one thing. It's going to control the cliff. If you've ever bowled on a house shot, especially in a, maybe a longer format tournament, you know at some point there's gonna be this defined line somewhere between eight board and 12 board that it's either gonna hook if you miss it right or it's gonna fly if you miss it left. And this ball will be able to keep your angles more in front of you, keep your feet a little bit further right so you can throw it into some usable friction, float through it the right way, but also still have some power to get through the pins once it gets there. But also, if you're a slower speed bowler, sometimes you just need a ball that's just gonna get through everything. Because if you have a medium rev rate, but it's everything seems to just overreact or just really labor up into the pocket because it's using up all of its energy, this ball is gonna have some of that natural length in it because of the ease of the cover, the lower differential of that core, and then it's gonna be able to maybe kick out some more 10 pins for you, increase your carry percentage a little bit because you're gonna be able to play in a part of the lane that's maybe more comfortable for you further right and again use usable friction but that's going to be our best case scenarios it's also important to know what this ball isn't what i don't think it can do or maybe some of the times when it might not be a great fit for you and in your arsenal it's easy to say that every ball has a place in somebody's bag but honestly that's not the truth so here are the two ways that i think that this ball doesn't match up first off I don't think that this ball is gonna be great for your traditional speed dominant bowlers. It doesn't have a whole lot of friction built into it. Because of how clean this cover is and the fact that it really doesn't flare a whole lot, a speed dominant bowler is probably gonna have issues getting this ball up into the pocket with the right amount of angle. Also, unless you are a traditional stroker type player, I really don't think that this ball is gonna come out on fresh conditions at all. I have not hit it with any surface at all. 
but every time that I've thrown this ball on fresh conditions, it's just over under all day. You miss it left, it just hits the oil and it just skids through it. And if you miss it right, it saves so much energy because it's so clean, it gets very, very angular and it just starts leaving weird artistic designs, otherwise known as splits. If you want a ball that's made for more fresh conditions, but you don't wanna maybe spend a whole lot of money or you still like playing more up the boards and maybe you just match up with the Hustle Core, you should probably go with something like a Hustle PBR or the Electrify Solid, something in that territory where it's just more made for fresher type conditions and keeping your angles in front of you. But honestly, I think that this ball has a place in a lot of people's arsenals, even more so than I thought originally. You know, with me essentially thinking that it was a reissue of the Hustle Wrap, I was really confused when this ball was released. I wasn't really sure what they were trying to do with it. It just seemed like it was just falling into the line because Roto Grip needed a new Hustle. But this is actually a pretty unique shape. There's just something about the way that this core matches up with this cover at the color of this deep wine red. Storm has really started to focus on these controllable, strong pearls, and this really falls into that category. When the Zen starts to be too much, this is probably gonna be the next ball out of my bag. Get to some usable friction, and then just get through pins. But that also means it's not doing the hockey stick-like motion, where it's just all clean and then all angle. That's just pretty unusable for pretty much every bowler. But I wanna know what you think. Do you like the idea of having a Hustle Wine in your bag? Where do you think it fits into your arsenal? Would you carry this and a High Road and a Zen and something else Pearl? Or is this gonna be the one that maybe you just have two Pearls and this is your weaker one? How do you kinda of see yourself laying that out? Let me know in the comments. Again, thank you so much to the guys over at Striking Edge Pro Shop. If you are interested in checking them out, got the link in the bio, but that is gonna be everything for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget, your best life is a 10-pin life. See ya.